Yeah, boy. How do I get out of this line? What the? There we go. What the? Now how do I get back to the line? I need to learn to use my phone, I guess. Where did all the light go? There we go. What's up, Buttercup? Favorite drink? Bacardi Sweat. I don't know what Bacardi is, but it, it's, it's sweat. Bacardi, the light behind me is messing things up. What's the number? What's the magic number today? Where do we start? Can people hear me? The water sounds suspect. It's not water. It's sweat. Can you see that? It's awesome. 67 okay at 67 we'll begin see i lean back it goes dark interesting we're not going to make 67 having fun at airports lately actually I, I have had fun you know last time i did one of these i was talking about how if you're a nice guy instead of being a dick you'll most of the time get what you want but I was saying how I have trouble doing that because I'm too emotional. In the situation, I'm too emotional. If someone's a dick, I'm a dick to them. But I should be nice because it's more likely that I get what I want. So anyway, turn the stupid light off. How about I turn that second light on? Is this good now? Patrick is watching a live video and he just met me, yeah. Sheesh. What was I saying? Oh yeah, but I was having trouble being a nice guy if someone was a dick to me. But I shouldn't be that way. I should always be nice and get, get what I want. But I just can't manage to do it. So this time, it was just my lucky day of traveling. First off, Air Asia. The seats are like this close together, literally. So obviously I don't fit. So I went on my first flight four hours. I just sat down in the exit row seat. Like I just went there. It wasn't my seat, but I just went to sit down there. No one said anything. So take off, someone comes and sit down in the completely empty exit row seats. So, uh, then they come and tell the person, sorry, you can't sit here. These are like, you have to pay extra for those seats. So you can't sit there. But I went there immediately when I boarded the plane. I just sat there. So they assumed it was my seat. Yes. Perfect. So that was the first win. Second win came in Indonesia. So they have a visa on arrival. And uh, surprise, surprise, I had no cash. And they accept only cash. <laughs> so I'm talking to the lady who you have to buy the visa from. And she says, you know what? Just go to the immigration officer and, and explain your situation. So I go to the immigration officer and he looks at, I, he gets my passport, he's flicking through it. And I say, I'm sorry, but I don't have any cash. So there's no visa in there. So he looks up at me. He, he asks me what I'm doing, why I'm going to Indonesia. I explain. He asks me when I'm leaving. I say, I'm, I think Tuesday I'm taking the boat over to Singapore. So then he just stamps my, my passport visa exempted so apparently i don't need a visa in indonesia i think it's just a scam the government just wants to charge people who visit indonesia i don't know but anyway i said i have no cash and they just let me in stamp that was my second win 
we're at 67. People want me to talk about that idiot in Arizona. We're in Indonesia now, talking about Indonesia. If uh, Fear Farm start a GoFundMe to get money to save the track, then we can talk about that idiot. Let's save that until then. Maybe we get more information. So, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I was probably in a good mood coming here because Indonesia, to be honest, is my favorite Asian country. And it's not because it's, it's not really superior in any way. Like it's not more developed. It's really fucked up actually, as a country. <laughs> if you know the history at all, then it's really amazing that the country is in the state it is. It could be a lot worse. But it's my favorite country and it's because people here, just random people, are just really nice, pleasant, friendly, and not in the kind of superficial way, like genuinely nice. That's what it seems like. I, it beats me why it is that way. You're just a con artist. Is that what you're telling us? Well, pretty much. Pretty much. It, um, yeah, I don't know what it is about this place. Like 60 years ago, people get this, 60 years ago, over a million people were killed because they were communists. And, and uh, the people who did it are still basically in power and the survivors and the f families who had people killed are still living here. And that's just the way it is. And history is rewritten and, and people just move on. It's fucking weird. I just don't get it. And then people are super nice here with that kind of history. Beats me. It beats me. Do you think a human has been on the moon? Well, it does look that way. That's what people are telling us. Do you think that Earth is flat? That's probably going to be the next question. So yeah, I heard next year Femka is going to be in Indonesia. So I'm definitely going to try and be here for that. I remember 2006 Worlds, a lot of people, especially American, they were too afraid to come here because apparently it's too dangerous. I don't know why. Yes, there are places in Indonesia which are dangerous, but they aren't the places we race horsey in. So I really don't know why you wouldn't come here. That's like saying I'm not going to go to America because there are a lot of shootings in Chicago. What the fuck? It makes no sense. Do you think the earth is flat? There we go. No, I don't think so. It's definitely not flat. So anyway, I came here to visit this kid, Fajar, who is on one of the shirts I've been wearing. 2013, I came here. 13 year old kid was smoking a cigarette. I figured something's not right. So, uh, turns out his parents Parents are on meth, they don't really give a shit about him. Wasn't going to school, so I sent him to school. And now it's four years later, I came back to check up on him, see what's going on. And uh, it's not easy, is it? If, if you have a, if, you, if you're poor, don't really have parents who support you, you don't have much going for you, then your worldview is gonna be a whole lot different to someone who grows up in a supporting environment and who goes to school. So it's a whole different world. It's definitely not easy to, to help people in a situation like that. So, the, so what we are doing is basically trying to get him to do RC instead of drugs. That's the goal, RC instead of drugs. And we'll see how that, how that goes. And uh, all we can do really is provide an opportunity and hope he takes it. So now he finally got his first shirts. Uh, he actually, uh, I don't think he's ever seen it. So he was pretty surprised and confused. Like what the hell, my face is on the shirt. 
but I'm, but I, I'm, I think he, he's pretty stoked. He was really shy when I was there, but you could tell as we were leaving that he was pretty stoked about the whole thing. So, let's see how that goes. He was 13 at the time, now he's 17. So he went to school for like two years, I think, two or three years, and he dropped out this year, so now we kind of renegotiated the situation, and, and uh, hopefully he'll start learning English now so we can communicate. Hopefully he takes this opportunity and who knows what happens next, but yeah, it's not, it's not an ideal situation, is it? There's a lot of that going on here. Hey JQ, looking forward to getting my new black edition. Should be a big, big step up over the white. Yes, it definitely is. Going from the white edition to the black edition is a big difference. Actually, I, had, I remember I wrote a blog last time I was here, I wrote a blog about Indonesia. I had one theory for why this country is different to some others. Like I think Thailand, Malaysia, they just, there's just a different feeling over there. It's more like you feel like it's different. It's more segregated, separate, like rich, poor, different, and people always want something from you, trying to sell you shit, or trying to scam you somehow. Here, it's just different. People say hello, smile, and that's, that's it. Like, they didn't try to sell you anything or get anything for you, from you, that was just it. Like a pleasant interaction. It's different. And I, my theory was, when you come to Indonesia, what strikes you is uh, how there's rich, super rich, and super poor, like, like that. Boom. And it's just a big mess, <laughs> to be honest. Seriously, you can be in like a super nice area and super nice hotel, and then there's some family living in a shack in a ditch right next to it. But what that means is, because they aren't separate, then rich and poor basically just go through their life rubbing elbows. And if you do that, if you interact with people from all walks of life, you'll realize that, you know what, we're all just human beings. We're all, we're all people. Some people have money, others don't. But at the end of the day, we're all people. I think if you live in your bubble, that's when shit starts going sideways. If it's more mixed together, then I think it works out better. I mean, as I said before, seeing the history, how it, how it is here, it's just incredible that there's not a civil war going on here. So that's, that's like my only theory for why it is the way it is. Explain Q-Spec for me. Q-Spec is uh, actually Spec Q. It's like we're going for the magic, magic finish thing here. Spec Q. So it's going to be a pre-built uh, black edition. So it's the standard black edition car, it's just pre-built at the factory. So. It's gonna come with a like basic setup. Everything's built. Everything's uh, thread locked. It's good to go. You just pop your motor in it and your servos, receiver, and you're good to go. So the idea is because nowadays people are so lazy, they don't want to build their cars anymore. They just want to race. But they want a pro car, not a ready to run. So we're gonna provide that for them. JQ, by saying regional, do you mean one team per country? No, I mean multiple teams, as many teams as it takes. If you want a hundred teams in a country, that's fine. There's no limit. Who's building it? The, the people in the factory are building it. No child labor. We don't believe in that. What's going on with Synetic? Synetic's still there. They just had an Indonesian national there. They just haven't had a big international race. Yeah, Dita is saying that in Asia people are friendly. Yes, I agree. All countries, people are friendly, but it's just different. When you come here, it's just like a different level. Every time, every time I notice it. So there has to be something to it. Factory, how many people do you have 
working there. You know what? I don't. I don't even know. I don't own the factory. So someone gets paid to build RC cars. Where do I sign up? I really doubt you'd like the work. Turn on your hotel TV yet? Why? Why would I turn the TV on? Okay, so that's that. Trying to get people to do RC instead of drugs. Get them to learn English and go to school. That's all good. Uh, what's next? Tomorrow? Actually, I need to end this. It's fucking late. I need to get up at 4 a.m. 4 a.m., go to the airport, head to Batam, the banana track or something. <laughs> we have a race over there. Uh, practice Friday. We have some sort of RC clinic. I'm supposed to teach people something. I don't know exactly what. Set up, driving, all kinds of crap. We'll see how that goes. And then we race. I don't know if we already start racing on Saturday or if it's just on Sunday. Anyway, so it's going to be a weekend of RC now, coming up. Other than that, remember to spam Adam Drake. That's always good. It always works. And uh, still scrapping the crap. I just got Revelation Raceway in America just received an Agama. So another happy ex-Agama owner is going to have a JQ Black Edition. That's cool. And uh, there was something else. Regional teams. Very happy about this new program. It seems to be working. Uh, we have a bunch showing up now. And a Fall Brawl in Myrtle Beach is actually going to be cool. There seems to be a bunch of JQ drivers who are going. There's just recently a family in North Carolina who signed up. Five people for a regional team. So sending them tents, shirts, hats. They all, they're all about to order cars. And they'll look the part. They'll be at full brawl too. So wife, husband, uh, and I can't even re remember who else. Friends and kids and mother-in-laws. I don't know. But it's a good deal. Indonesia is different as it was a Dutch colony for a long time. And it's the largest Muslim country unlike other Asian countries. Well, isn't Malaysia pretty Muslim too? And actually, in <laughs> Indonesia there are separatists and Islamists and they have all the same Islam problems that uh, other countries have so I'm not quite sure that the religion is the reason it is the, is nice let's put it that way six people oh they have six people now for a regional team in North Carolina so people if you want to form regional teams oh the father yeah father Husband, wife, friends, good. If you want to form regional teams, let us know and we'll hook you up. And what else? What else is new? What else is going on? Uh, Three Stone Park. I'll be at Three Stone Park in two weeks for a race in Malaysia. And I'm going to SoCal just briefly the 1st or 2nd of November and then I'll do the JBRL in Vegas the first weekend in November and after that I'm going for a tour of South America. Then I'll do the Fall Brawl in December and then I'll fly back to California and stay there until the spring. That's the plan right now. And let's hope that the Fear Farm is still there because that's my, pretty much my favorite track to go to there. So, yeah, some idiot had complained. I don't exactly know why, but he had complained about Fear Farm not, not being up to whatever standards the city has, and uh, they shut it down. So that's a really nice, nice thing to do, isn't it? Fellow RC racer shuts down the track. Let's hope they get it opened up. ordering my black edition this week when you come to SoCal again you can always stay at my place hit me up actually I thought you were in New York I guess you've moved back to SoCal I think you told me that actually now uh, what else I think I need to go to bed that's what I think Bobby Douche Canoe yeah we've, we'll cover that another time don't have time for that now 
So yeah, do RC instead of drugs. Cover that. Regional teams. Be nice to the immigration officers in Indonesia and they'll let you in. Visa exemption. And uh, yeah, I can't think of anything else. I'm jet lagged out of my mind. I'm gonna, I, I'll see you when I can do the next uh, Facebook Live, maybe after the event this weekend. So, until then, goodbye.